Welcome to the Know How video series for users of the Avaya Collaboration Designer. In this video, you'll learn how to validate, deploy, and test your workflow definitions. To start, we'll open the completed workflow definition created during the two Exploring Advanced Workflow Features videos. If you haven't watched these videos yet, you might find it useful to do so before continuing. Just to remind you, if you have watched them, the workflow is triggered on receipt of a Watson Guide subscription request submitted from a web page. The requester is then emailed or phoned to confirm their identity before their name and address are added to the subscriber database. Before you deploy a workflow definition, you can check that it is properly formed and configured using the Validate Workflow option from the toolbar. As you can see, a number of errors and warnings have been reported indicating that the workflow definition isn't currently valid. A number of objects on the phone path, including drop call and its preceding tasks, are reported as not terminating at an end event. The warning that a gateway is orphaned gives a further clue to where the issue lies, and double-clicking on the message highlights the object to which it applies. To resolve the issue, connect the drop call task to the conf or not gateway like so. Validating again confirms that all errors and warnings have been resolved and that the workflow definition is now valid. We are now ready to deploy the workflow definition on the Collaboration Environment server. Select the Deploy option from the toolbar. We'll keep the default file name and version number and just add a description. As you can see, the workflow is reported as having been deployed successfully. You can confirm this using a VIA or a System Manager. From the System Manager homepage, select Collaboration Environment to go to a list of Collaboration Environment server instances. Click on the name of the server you are using to go to a list of all snap-ins deployed on that server. Select the radio button next to the Collaboration Designer snap-in entry and then click Administration Access in the bar at the top of the list. The Workflows tab opens, listing all of the deployed workflow definitions on the server. And there you can see our workflow definition. To test the workflow definition, we need to trigger its start event. There are a few ways we could go about this. For example, we could use a tool such as the Postman REST client to replicate the behavior of the client web application and send an HTTP request to the event catalog, which, in turn, would generate the mail at subscription request event that triggers the start event and initiate an instance of the workflow. Postman is a free app that you can download from the internet and run inside the Google Chrome browser. Alternatively, as in this case, we can use System Manager's built-in Create Instance tool to send an initiating HTTP request direct to the deployed workflow definition. Check the box next to the workflow definition and click Create Instance. Enter the data values to be sent with the request, in this case a mailing address, name and email address, and click OK. The message confirms that an instance of the workflow definition has been created and assigned a unique identifier. Notice that an email has been received in the requester's mailbox asking them to confirm their subscription request. This is a good sign that the workflow is behaving as expected so far. Note that the instance ID has been appended to the confirmation URL as a query string. To check the current status of the workflow instance, select the Instances tab. The instance we just created is at the top of the list. Double click on it to open a graphical representation of the workflow and its status. Objects that have completed successfully are highlighted with a green border and those that have been visited but not completed with an orange border. From this we can see that the send email task completed successfully and that the workflow instance is currently paused at the receive task. Any objects that had been cancelled would be highlighted with a purple border and any with errors with red. You can double click on any of the objects to inspect details of its input and output values and any errors. As you may remember, the workflow continues processing when the requester confirms their subscription 
by visiting the confirmation URL in the email. We can replicate this using the Postman REST client to send an HTTP request to the event catalog, which will, in turn, generate a mail at subscription confirmation event that triggers the receive task in this particular workflow instance. To save time, most of the values we need to generate the request have already been entered into Postman. The URL to which the request is to be posted comprises the SIP entity IP address of the Collaboration Environment Security Module, followed by slash services, slash eventing connector, slash events. If you don't know this IP address, you can easily look it up in System Manager. The message body comprises the event family, type and version, plus the metadata correlation ID value, which we set to be the workflow instance identifier. Click Send to generate and post the request. The return status is 200 OK, so it's looking good. Back in System Manager, we can check the status of the workflow instance. All objects on the email path are now highlighted with a green border, indicating that the HTTP request successfully triggered continuation of the workflow and that the subscription database was updated with the requester's name and address. So now you know how to validate, deploy and test your own workflow definitions. Check out other videos in this series available on the DevConnect portal at the URLs shown.